How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. And today we have another pair of Soleon headphones. Now these ones are a little bit different. If we turn around the side, these ones right here are actually supposed to be RGB and light up. My previous pair that I reviewed didn't have any of the kind of bells and whistles in there, but uh, I really enjoyed the quality and the comfort, so I'm really excited to try this out. Let's go ahead and zoom in right here at the bottom and see some of the details about the headset. So right here it says plush memory foam ear pads, clear and loud noise canceling microphone, and then virtual 7.1 stereo surround. So it pretty much has the same as the last one when it comes to like specs, but let's open this up and see how these lights look on here. I'm really excited to kind of test that out. So let's go ahead and slide this off. And right here we're greeted with a uh, nice kind of Lion, I guess you'd say wearing sunglasses or it could be a Camaro. Honestly, it looks like it might have goat horns And the other side is black And let's go ahead and lay this down kind of like a shoe box And slide that up And if we rotate this over here You get a really nice view of the headphones so this is basically how the other ones were packaged. Let's get a really nice zoom in on that. So they have a really nice plush kind of soft feel to them. If you notice when I press down, it kind of slowly goes back to its original position. That's because it is genuine, genuine, <laughs> mem genuine memory foam. Like, look at me, I'm all tongue tied from trying to sound smart. Anyways, let's go ahead and pull these out. All right, so the first thing I noticed while pulling these out of here is this is an exclusive USB only headset, which I honestly don't mind at all. Um, I really think that the uh, single USB is a lot better if it had than if it had like you know multiple things sticking out of it. So I'm actually kind of excited, and uh, yeah, so the design is relatively the same. It still has that nice kind of speaker grill. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. So the speaker grill is basically the same, um, made out of metal. The uh, logo is actually uh, still pretty nice. I like the design of it. And if we look over here, move that out of the way a little bit, we have the inside mesh area it has a really soft, you know, if you can see I'm pressing down on it, it actually has foam in there and uh, it's really comfortable from the last pair I've tried. I'm gonna try these ones on right now too. So I'm gonna let you know if it feels as good as the last pair. Oh yeah, these are really nice. The comfortability alone is just insane. I'm gonna take them off. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug these into the keyboard on my computer real quick and see how that RGB lighting is looking. All right, I went ahead and plugged them in, and dun dun da da. It pulsates on the side, a really nice RGB color, and then the microphone itself right here has a nice little light on it, and it also comes with a little pad. So if you want to put this on here for, uh, you know, if you have like any puzz or s noises and you want it to sound a little bit nicer you can put that on there kind of defeats the led a little bit you can still see it but let's go ahead and zoom in on here real quick and see how nice these lights are look at that i like how the leds are like kind of like a little strip and it just goes around 360. but yeah these are really comfortable and the leds look great i'm really excited to own these um, I'm going to put a little bit of no copyright music on and test out the audio quality before ending the video. So let's go ahead and hear that. All right, let's try these on now that we got some music playing. Yeah, that sounds really good. There we go. Let's go ahead and turn that music off now. So as you can hear, the tempo and bass quality in these are just as exceptional as the last pair that I reviewed and honestly I'm really happy that this is just the RGB 
Um, you also have the option to turn off the uh, mic right here, I guess. And obviously, you know, the standard volume control on the actual headset. But I'm, I'm really surprised, honestly. Like, for the price of these headphones, the quality is what I would say a $100 plus dollar headset would have. But yeah. We're going to be looking at the difference between live human blood and dried human blood. Now these were both taken from me using my diabetic poker. I use this on a daily basis, so it's not really a big deal for me. So we're going to put this under a microscope that is hooked up with a camera directly to my PC so you guys can see this really up close. Let's go ahead and check out the microscopic world. Alright, so the first slide we're going to be doing is the live human blood. So let's go ahead and put this on here. And go ahead and find the blood itself. There we go. And now we just need to zoom in. And we're going to turn down the lighting a little bit so that we can get a good look. Wow, look at that. So you can actually see, if we try to focus in a little bit more, you can actually see the individual blood cells they kind of just look like tiny little dots though. So this is the farthest away zoom. It goes in about probably 900 times more than this. Um, so we're going to get a really good look at these uh, in a minute. But this is basically what it looks like at a glance. And oh wow, look at that. You can actually see the uh, end of like the blood right there, like the edge kind of looks like a I don't know like a red ocean it's kind of interesting all right let's go ahead and switch it up a little bit so we're gonna zoom this out and then we're gonna switch to the next zoom whoa all right let's turn down the lighting a little bit oh do you see that movement right there there's a little bit of movement in there. That's so interesting. All right, let's see if we can move this around just a little bit. I'd love to be able to, oh, there it is. Look at that. Let's see how we can focus in a little bit more. How crazy is that? You know, it's crazy because it just came out of my body like a minute ago too. So seeing like all these little things that are currently inside of me right now, it's kind of a, kind of a trippy experience, you know? All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out again. And now we're going to go to the one that zooms in the farthest. All right, so it took me a second to uh, get a proper zoom. But uh, here we are. We got a little bit of the blood cells on here. And uh, we focus in a little bit. You can kind of see their shapes. It's really interesting. It almost looks like a mosaic art piece of some sort. It's really interesting stuff. If, if it sounds like I'm talking from the side, it's because I'm looking at my monitor while doing this. Because um, you can actually see on your computer screen what you're seeing through the microscope because it has a built-in camera. So it's really cool. I bought this specifically for the channel. So, this has been live human blood, and honestly, it doesn't move around as much as I thought it would. I, I've looked at this before um, on a worse, much worse, like $20 microscope, and I didn't really see any movement either. So, I'm not too surprised. I think maybe it would be like slow, gradual movement, or maybe we're just not able to get that super zoom in that we need. But let's go ahead and switch to the dried human blood. All right, I got the slide on of the dried human blood, or the <laughs> J-jar blood. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in on this using the first zoom. Whoa. Look at that. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of, like, uh, lightning bolts or something. Kind of like um, scattered, you know, like, li or you know what? Cracks on, like, a... In, in like really soft kind of like dirt you know they get all cracked up kind of reminds me of that too that is super interesting let's see if we can move it around a little bit 
you know, I think that all these tiny little ones right here are the individual actual cells. It's kind of hard to tell because they've already decayed so much. Because this is a slide from about, I'd say, a few months ago. Really interesting. Let's go ahead and switch to the second zoom. Alright, I went ahead and found the focus point. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Almost there, almost there. Wait. And fine tune it. Wow, look at that. That is really interesting. You literally could take that and like, I don't know, fill in like the color or something, you know what I mean? You could do like a, it almost looks like a abstract art piece. That's so weird. I like how like all of the cracks in there are like super defined and they're all different shapes. And this is all just my blood. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go to the last zoom. Now this one is going to zoom in really far. All right, so I found the zoom point. Let's go ahead and focus in. Whoa, look at that. That is insane. That's really crazy. You know, I kind of like the look of the dried human blood versus the uh, the live human blood. Because it like everything's so unique and looking, you know what I mean? That is so cool. But yeah, this is this is uh this is a series that I want to continue on. So if you like this video, please feel free to subscribe to the channel um, in the description below. I'm gonna go ahead and link where I got the microscope itself. And if you want to drop by my Patreon, I have a bunch of different uh, tiers that you can help support the channel for purchases like this. But yeah, this is something that you see every day. They sell it on practically every corner now. This is coffee. And you can see me zooming in and out here a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of going over the different uh, parts of the coffee. As you notice, there's some actual pitting in the coffee itself right there. I don't know if you can see that really close up. And strangely enough, it's actually very reflective. Um, normally, I would say when you see coffee, you see it as this kind of dull, kind of matte. But uh, this, a close up when you shine the LEDs on it, let's shift over here a little bit, and we focus in, you get these kind of crystal-like, kind of rigid shapes which is really interesting considering the fact that when you see a coffee granule it looks absolutely nothing like this but when we start to zoom in very finely like this we can see these ridges and kind of like crystal structures that just go in all different directions let's move over here a little bit now if we go and we can kind of see the side of this one right here see i'm using a compound microscope so you can't really fully see the entire granule because it kind of needs to be on a flat surface but this works really good for when you can get these chunks that are relatively on the same plane of focus yeah like right here as you see right here we have another really nice piece and this one has a pretty intense pitting towards the bottom if you notice it almost looks a little bit like honeycomb we have all these different variations of color too. We have some yellows, and some browns, and some mixtures of it all. And uh, it almost looks like an alien rock. Funny enough thing is I have LEDs pulsing from the top rather than from the bottom. So the complete bottom kind of looks like a black abyss. So it's kind of like you're looking at maybe like an asteroid uh, floating in space. So that's really cool. We also have some little ridges sticking out in the corner right there as well. And then uh, a little bit of a chunk attached right there, almost by, kind of looks like almost about like just a thread. But it's really interesting to see all the different color variations because when you see it from far away, it looks basically like a solid brown, but you get a really nice look the closer that you get. But yeah, so let's move over here a little bit and try to focus in on this small, tiny little piece. Ooh, look at that. Okay, this is really cool. So if you notice right here, it kind of looks like it's just floating. And like I mentioned just a minute ago, the background normally has an LED that shines it from the top so you can see cells. But on this side right here, we have it shining from the top. So you're getting this really nice view of this one. And this is actually a piece that is a little bit broken up. It's a smaller piece of the granule. But when it broke up, it really shattered almost into like a 
kind of like a glass. It almost looks like those rock candies that you get as a kid. It's very, very interesting. And all the little tiny pieces surrounding it too. It almost looks like uh, an asteroid uh, breaking up as it kind of heads towards Earth. But another really interesting thing about the coffee as well is that, uh, you know, back in the 6th century, a goat herder, actually, I believe, I think, I forget what country it was in, I actually researched this, uh, his goat started eating some of the coffee beans, and it ended up, he tried the coffee beans as well, because his goat liked it so much, that uh, that's kind of how coffee in history, apparently, was found. Not sure how true that is, but interesting fact, nevertheless. And today we have something by Umi DG. This is a Android smartwatch, and I'm really interested to open this up and use it. Um, I believe it is touchscreen, and it works with both iPhone and Samsung, and probably anything else that has Bluetooth. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at this box. It's really premium if we zoom in right here. It has all of these uh, kind of, you can actually feel it, these little kind of grooves on the front. And then if we look at the side right here, let me zoom in a little bit. It says, you watch too. It says, Melanie's Black. It's by uh, Umi DG, and they have their website right there if you want to check it out. We turn it around. We're greeted with a sticker. And then it says, smartwatch, Umi DG with iPhone or Samsung, or probably anything that has the app on the App Store. And then at the bottom, it's just the uh, things to open it up. All right, now that we cut those open, let's just go ahead and slide this out. There we go. And we are greeted with a card. Let's go ahead and see what it says. It says, thanks for choosing Umi DG. Please leave us a review or feedback if you like it. We do appreciate it. Please tell us first if you have problems or advice about it, and then we will improve or solve the problem for you. I like their dedication to customer service. Ooh, look at this, guys. This is the watch right here. We've it has a screen protector on it, though, so I'm not worried about those light scratch looking things. Let's go ahead and pull this out of here. I'll probably have to do it upside down. Let's see. Oh, there we go. And there. Oh, did you see that? It just lit up a little bit. I think there's actually, there is, there's already power in this. Look at that. That's super cool. And then we have the screen protector on here, but you know what's a smart idea? is to not take that off because it's basically a free screen protector and uh you know i mean it might be a little bit more scratchy because it's just a little thin layer of plastic as you can see but um if you don't have a screen protector immediately i would just leave that on there at least it's not dumb and have like a big logo of like the thing on it some things do like, like a lot of the bigger brands if you get like a samsung it has like a thing on the outside to where you can't just keep the temporary screen protector but yeah this is the back. It looks as though, since it's so cold, my fingers are kind of leaving a uh, kind of impression. The band is very nice. It feels kind of like a, it is, it's like a metal mesh. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. That is really nice. You actually can see through it a little bit too. Yeah, it's like a metal mesh kind of all connected together. Oh, that's very nice feeling in the hands. Let's go ahead and set this down for a second and see what else is in the box. And taking this off right here, we see that it comes with a USB charging cable. It is... what is this? So let's take this off actually. It looks a little bit different than some of the cables I've seen, so let's go ahead and see what's going on with it. Oh, it's a special proprietary cable specifically for this. It has two things to charge, and it also magnetizes to the side of the watch. Let's go ahead and see where it actually charges. Probably on the back of it. 
Alright, so I went ahead and I found the charging portion of it. It actually is just right here, so if we grab this and just set it down, it attaches with the magnets and you can just charge it just like that. Another thing I figured out while I was messing with this kind of off camera is this whole band is magnetic. This right here is a magnet, so you can adjust it to your wrist size. And it just magnetizes right on here. That is super sleek, very nice. I like that a lot. It also has their logo on the little band too right there with kind of like a brushed metal. Very nice. And then in the box right here too, we also have a uh, rubber band as well. If you wanted to switch out the band and use this one as a backup, which is very nice to have. Also comes with the little things that need to go in there or could be for replacement in case they break. And then just an instruction manual here at the bottom if we zoom in. But without further ado, let's go ahead and see these uh, features on the actual watch itself. All right, so I'm assuming we unlock it like this. So it looks as though it has pretty much full battery. I see a thing for steps as well. Let's see if we can turn up the uh, settings with the brightness. Oh, one, two, three, four. So four settings for brightness. There we go. Has a mute, switch style, power off and on, reset. It says that you can use this as a shutter for taking pictures wirelessly with your camera. We have a heart monitor, the weather, messaging. Let's go ahead and go to that. I gotta fix that screen timeout. It says I'm empty with my messages, so you'll get your message alerts if somebody texts you. You can't click from right there. Probably would be in here. So walking, running, cycling. Obviously the weather, you have to connect it to your phone for it to uh, update or undate. It looks like there might be a typo right there, but that might be fixed in the update, so. Sorry, my camera's having a little bit of trouble focusing, so I'm trying to keep it at a good distance. And then it also has what looks to be a music player, which I need to connect to undate. <laughs> and then it goes back to here as well. Doesn't look like there's any swiping from side to side. We have a timer that's built in, so we can just set a timer right there. In case you wanted to like make something for uh, dinner or something, you need to set a timer. You can just put it on your hand and then periodically check it. Switch style. Yeah, you can change it all right here for different personalized looks. Looks like we have three different ones. This one looks pretty nice. But yeah, this is really nice, and let's go ahead and try it on and see how easy it is to uh, snap this all together. So just expanded the band all the way out. My hands are kind of big, so. We just grab the magnet right here, tighten it up, and then rotate my arm around, and let the magnet sit. And we can adjust it from this side. I see my cat where he scratched me. <laughs> so yeah, this is what it would look like on the hand. Very nice and kind of low profile compared to some of the other ones that I have. Or, I have one other one actually. Um, well, I had two. I had the first one that I had broke a long time ago, and then I got the Samsung um, Gear watch, but that one is actually raised up about this high, and that's a flagship one. So, this one being this low profile is actually really impressive. Oh, did you see that? When I moved it, there's a gyroscope. So, let me keep steady. And then when I turn my, wi my wrist, it actually turns the screen on. So, it has that feature to where, if see, right now, I don't know if you can see, it's off. I turn my hand, and the display comes on. That's actually really nice. That's pretty cool. That is actually a pretty nice premium feature that they packed in there. So sorry that it's a little bit reflective, but I uh, hope you guys got a pretty good idea of the watch. I like it a lot and I'm really happy that uh, I got to try this out. But yeah, pretty rich feature watch. I'm definitely gonna put this in the link in the description below so you guys can check it out. Um, but yeah, I'm really impressed with it and I think that uh, It'd be a really nice daily driver for like telling the time or receiving some messages and whatnot and just generally keeping track of my weight and my health. 
But yeah, and welcome to a JHR game review. Now, I had a lot of people requesting me for game reviews for a little while, ever since the beginning of my channel. But today, we're going to be trying out a game called Temtem. Now, Temtem's kind of like a Pokemon-like game where you collect monsters and you can trade them and, you know, kind of battle gems and whatnot. But I think this game is really fun. I spent about five hours on this, and I'd say it's really unique because not only is it like Pokemon, but it's the MMO RPG we've always wanted in Pokemon, so you can actually see other players in here. And the actual scenery in this game is actually really nice. As you see, there's somebody else running across right here to use the terminal. So this is your little terminal right here. It stores your Temtems right there. You can swap them into your party. And then if you want to heal them up, you just slide your cards into here. And they load up. And they're all healed. Now this is a miniature Temporium. And they have Temporiums that are more like, you know, they have a bunch of these machines in there. But those are more like for, um you know having a shop inside and for like a ton of people who are in there they always have them in the, like the base town and they're kind of like the off-brand pokemon center of the game i guess but if we run around here you can actually see my pick pick which is a temtem following me and you can choose which one is by your side you know depending on who you have listed first in your actual party right here or your squad now if we run into the grass area right here you actually have wild uh temtem encounters now this is an untamed pick pick. So here are some of the uh, pick picks that I have. I mean, not the pick picks, the temtems I have. Right here, we can select from all of these different moves, which you can learn new moves and also evolve as well. So I'm going to use heavy blow against this, and then I'm going to use DC beam, which is a lightning attack, which he didn't fare very well. So heavy blow should take him out. So the pick pick is now damaged, and I gained some EXP as you can see from up here. There's also breeding in the game, but I haven't gotten to that yet. But as I said, the the scenery and the pretty much everything in this game is very nice, very reminiscent of a Pokemon game, but without ripping it off 100%. I'd say they, I'd say that this is like a very good homage to everything that we've ever wanted in an online Pokemon style game and I'm really excited to uh, have been able to get it on the early access day one. There was a lot of trouble when it first came out. There was about a 14,000 queue due to server issues but um, the devs worked for about 16 hours and got the game hot fixed within the same day and now it's completely playable and there's only a few other bugs that need to be polished out but as you can see from my gameplay right here, it's absolutely impressive. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away, but also worried I'm going to waste a lot of time on this. <laughs> As you see, right there I defeated a Kaku. And then I'm almost to a next level on my Pikpak. So I'm going to try to upgrade my level one more time with my Pikpak. And then show you how to catch a Temtem as well. Alright, so we now ran into a Temtem right here. So we have another Kaku that just appeared. So it's a 2v2 battle. I don't know if I said that before, but you always start off with two Temtems. And usually if there's a Temtem encounter, it can be two as well. And you have to switch and target which one you want that specific attack to go to. So we're going to do a heavy blow on this. And then maybe just... Hmm, maybe a Wind Blade. I'm not sure that might knock it out. Let's see. No, that was perfect. Okay, so this little poison effect they're going to do. Alright, so all I have to do now is go to my bag and go to my Tem card and then use it. And this is kind of the capturing process. Very cool animation, very polished. And then you can also name them as well. But I'm just going to send them to my Tem deck, which is kind of like the Pokebox. So I leveled up my Tori. I think the Temtem designs in here, if I haven't already said it, are better than some of the a lot of the Pokemon designs that I've seen recently come out. I think maybe it's primarily to do for the fact that this game is probably from Pokemon fans rather than, um, you know, Nintendo themselves. And we all know that game companies can sometimes be a little bit uh, 
biased or not open-minded when it comes to new game designs or new uh, concept art designs of uh, different characters and whatnot. So I really think that they had a good handle on, you know, how to make these guys look. So this is a little town right here, and you actually have side quests. If I was to talk to this person right here, I could accept the side quest. I'm just going to skip through that. As you see in the corner right there, it actually um, appeared, the little side quest right there. And if we go through here, there's actually a place where you can buy new clothes. It's very nice. You can also change the style of your hair, your clothing, and pretty much anything else right here. There's probably multiple different clothing stores, I just haven't made it to those areas yet. And then if we go around here, I believe... No, nope, not this one. Almost to the front. This town's a little bit big. There we go. This is a Temporium. So basically a Temporium is a place with a bunch of terminals to where you can heal up all of your Temtem. I like that little animation, very satisfying. Oh, I accidentally pressed it twice. Oh, there we go. Well, now you guys got a good view on how that works. And then, of course, in the front, you can access these guys right here to transfer your guys out or in. And you have about 10 boxes, so I believe there's about 115 Temtems available available to catch. I'm not 100% sure, but um, from what I saw in the Temtempedia, I believe that's how many there are. I don't know if they're all readily available on this early access release, but it is really cool that there are so many, and uh, they can also evolve, and they can also be shiny as well. So rather than just pointlessly aim around, uh, or walk around, I'm going to go ahead and just end the video here, because I think I got kind of a good you know, general basis of, like, this game and its gameplay, and, uh, just kind of a short little video for you guys. I wanted to be able to kind of show kind of the things that I like and, you know, the different, uh, aspects of this game because I think it has a lot of potential. I believe its Kickstarter raised about, what, $500,000, and about 30,000 people are on the Discord who most look like they brought the game, so... Very good stuff. Really excited to see how, uh, you know, things turn out. You know, just, uh, yeah. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. It really, really helps. Uh, but more than anything, thumbing up that video, you know, show YouTube's algorithm that, you know, my content is good. Um, help me grow my channel and uh, help me to, you know, continue making content like this. You know, with all your guys' support. Ah, the Nintendo Entertainment System. With just a little bit of a slide, a click, and a close, this started off many people's childhoods, ranging from Mario, The Legend of Zelda, all the way to the Kirby games. It is a long journey that it's made all the way to the Nintendo Switch, but I'm going to show you how I turned this, with a little bit of power, a little bit of know-how, into a shrunk-down version. So... Stay tuned. Right here is one of the many business cards I've collected throughout my travels. Right here, for a size comparison, is a 1.4 GHz quad-core computer that runs a multitude of different operating systems that are Linux-based. It can run a retro operating system called, I believe, uh, RetroArch, or it is also commonly known as Emulation Station. And basically what that is, is an operating system that goes onto an SD card and then loads into the bottom slot right here. So I'm going to show you how I go from this tiny card-shaped computer to putting it in something that looks just like a Nintendo Entertainment System. Therefore shrinking down an older console and making it something more modern. Let's do this. So the first thing we need to do is take this out of its nice pretty little box that it came in and then slide this baby out and put that to the side. So this is a really nice case and uh, I picked this one specifically because some of the ones had the colors mismatched. If you look at the side it has a bunch of different openings for the uh, things to go into. That's the HDMI, the audio, and the micro USB. And back here it even has a place for the SD card and a place for the LEDs to show up. So that's really nice. Not to mention uh, ventilation. So if we take this apart right here, set that down, you can see that it comes with a nice little tool kit, which is nice because I don't know where my iFixit kit is. Looks as though there's some screws here at the bottom and then a nice little screwdriver that we can use. 
let's go ahead and open this up. We'll take the screwdriver out and then get something to set these on top of. Let's see what I have around my desk. Let's just use the box right here and we'll just slide these out. We have a bunch of little screws right here. It looks like some of these have a little lip on them, so I'm assuming those are used for something different. But let's go ahead and put this here and grab the Raspberry Pi. So it has four screws right here, and it looks as though it needs to lay down into this little section. So let's see how well it fits. That's nice. As you can see, it uh, falls in there pretty nicely. All right, so now that we have that in there, we need to go ahead and attach this portion right here. It came with a heat sink on a more expensive version, but I opted out on it. Hopefully there's enough ventilation. So let's go ahead and adjust the flap and then set it down on top of here. That's satisfying. Closes up pretty well. Adjust the little flap and it clips on. And then I believe from the bottom, yeah, you can see the motherboard kind of cool. We're actually going to put the screws in right here so that we can attach everything together. Yeah, a tiny bit of flex, but it's pretty much all in there now. And if you open this little latch right here, which actually clips in, you get the full USBs right here. Really cool thing about the Raspberry Pi is if you want to load retro games onto a USB, you can actually load them off from right here. You just grab a USB, slide it in, and then load up your games. It also has Ethernet as well if you want a fast connection for, say, if you want to put it by your TV and install a uh, version, I believe, of Moonlight. You can stream your PC games to your PC with low latency, which is kind of nice, kind of like a Steam Link but let's go ahead and close that up. I already have an operating system loaded, I believe, on this 64 gigabyte Samsung Evo. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this in here and then boot up some games. Since we've already kind of shrunk down this guy and showed you how simple it was to go from the original to something that can do the same thing. Let's see what we can do with this. And now with a little bit of software tinkering and getting Super Mario Brothers 3 on here, we're just gonna go ahead and plug in the HDMI and then we're also going to plug in the micro USB that is used to power it on, which is only 5 volts, by the way. As you can see, it's starting to boot up. It starts up and says RetroPie. You can actually customize the loading screen if you wanted to. I've seen people do it before. I'm not sure how to do it myself, though. As it says, Emulation Station. And now it says no gamepad detected. I have a PlayStation 4 controller plugged in with a micro USB right here. And all we have to do is unlatch this and plug it into one of the mini USBs. Hold down a button. And it is now working. Then we can go over to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And then click on Super Mario Brothers 3. That'll give a little message about the emulator. And just like that, you have a console that is actually smaller than the size of the original cartridge. It's really amazing how technology has progressed throughout the years and that you can pretty much do whatever you want now with your uh, <laughs> older games. You can run them on a credit card sized computer and everything. Let's see if we can get a little bit of uh, gameplay going on in here. As you see, I can move around and everything and start the level. Everything runs super smooth. And I can uh, pretty much play it just like I would, except this time we're doing it in high definition. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, what do you guys think? I think this is probably one of the most advanced things that I've ever done, besides the Game Boy one, where I kind of redid the shell on an old Game Boy Advanced. But uh, yeah, I want to do more videos like this in the future, and I really think that uh, technology is one of my specialties. But yeah, Super Mario Bros. 3, shrinking down a Nintendo Entertainment System. And today we're going to be looking at this Sports Mini MP3 player by Suobi. And uh, 
it's really interesting because this is supposed to be used when you're swimming or maybe you're like in a you know jacuzzi or something and it's supposed to be able to maintain its quality so that's actually really cool i've never really thought about using an mp3 player while swimming before but uh let's go ahead and look at the side right here if we zoom in real quick shows that it comes with some headphones in here that look to be waterproof comes with multiple different attachments a usb to charge it a usb extender cable and it shows that it works with pc and mac which is cool it says that this is eight gigabytes it says it's submergible waterproof mp3 player and headphones it has a clip has a multiple digital audio out formats compatible high quality sound and low power consumption Shuffle function, built-in 8GB memory, built-in rechargeable battery, 15 hours of music playback, and Mac and PC. And if you want to look at the technicals, you can go ahead and pause right here. I'll go ahead and zoom in real quick for you guys. But without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up and see how it sounds and works. Kind of has a plastic encasing. Go ahead and bend this back. Then it should just slide right out. There we go. So here's the MP3 player. I think it's stuck in there with some kind of, uh, probably a twisty tie or something. Let's go ahead and pop that up. It's interesting how it is uh, put in here. How does that open? Ah, the open symbol with the arrow. <laughs> Looks as though there's some kind of little uh, thing right here. Oh, it's the clip that's actually holding it on. So if you pull that up, or maybe it's the other way, I'm not too sure. Let's just, it's made out of paper so we can rip it. There we go, just pulled it off. So, this is what the MP3 player looks like. Kind of like a little pod design. Looks like something you keep your AirPods in. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it real quick. So it has a play and pause, forwards, backwards, and then the volume up and down. Then on the back it has the uh, information and the brand name. We have the headphone jack. And then the charging port is unknown at the moment. I'm wondering where that is. So I went ahead and pulled this out of the bag. Very interesting. It charges as well through the headphone jack. So you put in the headphone jack and then connect it through USB. So you probably transfer data over this as well. I haven't seen something like this in a long time since like the iPod shuffle. Pretty cool stuff. Let's go ahead and set this down. Let's zoom back in on the box. Let's go ahead and pull out the rest of the stuff in here. Right here we have the instruction booklet. Some accessories with the headphones and the little uh, nubs for different shaped ears. A extender so that you can make it longer. And then it says your referral is our greatest compliment. So, there's that. And it says, warning, the USB cable attached to your MP3 player is not water resistant. Yeah, you wanna make sure that's totally dry and it's not wet inside before you connect that to your PC or charging dock. Might get a little bit of a shock or fry it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and load a song on here and see how it works and sounds. All right, so I went ahead and connected the MP3 player, threw on some new copyright music, and let's go ahead and set that down and then unpackage these headphones. Well, that's interesting. Look at this. These are shaped super interestingly. I guess these ridges help it to uh, not let water in your ear when you're swimming. That's really cool. All right, let's go ahead and connect these and see uh, how it all sounds. All right, let's gonna plug that in. And then let's see. I'm assuming you turn it on by holding down the play button. 
Got a red light. Has a uh, sample song on here. Let's go next, see if my music showed up. Yep, my music that I put on here is actually working. Headphones feel a little funny because they're going a lot deeper than they normally would, primarily because it's so they don't get water in there. They're not bad quality. They're pretty decent for just, you know, complimentary headphones that come with it. And yeah, go back, forward, and it's working. Let's see if we can hear a little bit of, uh, actually, let's see how loud it goes and see if you guys can hear it. So yeah, it works as intended, and it was really easy. I just went to YouTube to MP3, th plugged it in, it automatically popped up into a new window, threw the file in there, and immediately it showed up and let me play it. So works as intended, but I'm not going to dunk this in water. Um, it is uh, pretty good, and I'm pretty sure that it will work good in water. I mean, it says that it will. And from just looking at it, it's visual dexterity and where its seam lines are seem like it will be um, pretty good. I wouldn't bring it in water if you don't have the headphone jack plugged in there, though, because that's just a open wound. But yeah, and today I have kind of a quick video. I just wanted to kind of show off these nice wire cutters I got. And uh, they're just some basic wire cutters, but um, I really wanted to see how well they did against some of the cords that I was working with. I actually am working on kind of a retro project right now, and I'll tell you guys more about that once I get closer to finishing it, but uh, let's go ahead and open these up and see how well they work for what I'm going to be using them for. So these are what they look like. Kind of has a nice kind of plasticky thing on the outside for grip. Doing a pretty hard squeeze. It has a little portion in here too. I don't know if that's for stripping, but I think it's just for like a regular uh, kind of grip. So I have a little bit of wire over here, and this is actually doorbell wire, and it's really thick. This is, if you notice when I bend it, it, it bends and it keeps its shape, and it kind of, uh, it's very tough. It has a very thick piece of um, copper in the middle. If I, oh, that was really easy. Ooh, look at that. Hardly any press immediately comes off. Let me zoom in right there and show you that copper thing I'm talking about. If you look right here, it has a uh, pretty decent sized copper piece right there. And I'm kind of using these to hook up an uh, arcade kind of set of buttons on the inside of a project I'm doing. But let's see if we wanted to cut two of these at the same time. Easy. I don't think this is a stripper. No, it's not. Let's see if I triple these up, how well it would cut. So this is four wires at once. Easy. And honestly, this is going to save my relationship too because I might have been using my fiance's fabric scissors to cut wire. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> But yeah, these work really good, and I'll put them in the description below. Um, I know this was a short video, but I just wanted to show you guys, and I hope you enjoyed. And thank you guys so much for your support. A huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Today we're going to be looking at these Bomb Owl SW19 neckband wireless earphones. Now these are for kind of like a, a sports like jogging like the other ones I reviewed. But what's really nice about these ones is in the packaging, if you pull right here, it's actually attached by magnets and has a really nice opening to where you can see them immediately which is some pretty nice engineering on the packaging. I really like when things open kind of smoothly like that. Now it says right here that it has an ANC on and off. 
volume up slash next depending on if you press down or not the MFB and then the volume slash previous one and then it also shows that it has a charging port at the bottom if we close this real quick we also see some of the features that are included a IPX waterproof 12 hour working time built-in microphone and middle finishing and then on the back, it just gives kind of a view of what they're going to look like. But let's go ahead and open these up and see how the quality is, especially compared to the other ones I reviewed just a week ago. Looks like this slides out pretty easily. Set that to the side. And I'm assuming these will just easily pop out. Let's go ahead and put some pressure. There we go. So, here we go. So the first thing that I'm noticing right here is this is made out of like a uh, plastic material, as the other one that I was uh, previously reviewing, I believe, had a metal material here. I'm not too sure, though. The band is kind of the same kind of spaghetti noodle kind of silicone rubber as the other one. Very soft feeling to the touch, so I assume that it will be... Uh, just as comfortable and slip resistant off your neck. The headphones have the same kind of grill on the inside to stop debris. Kind of hard to get a uh, good view on that. Here's a little uh, comfort thing for the inside of your ear so it's not too uh, rough around the harder plastic. And when you're wearing them, from what it says on the front, if they're hanging on your neck, they'll actually touch together with these magnets right here so that they won't fall off even if uh, they do slip off because it'll be kind of connected right here and it takes a little bit to actually pull them apart. But yeah, let's go ahead and connect these to my phone and then compare the quality and see how they are. All right, I went ahead and connected it. It already said SW19, and it's really cool because it also said it has 80% battery, so it tells you how much battery is left in these, which is very convenient so that uh, you don't, uh, you know, bring them with you and not know how much is in there. You don't have to wait for a red light to come on or anything like that. So that's good. Let's go ahead and go to YouTube now and put on some no copyright. All right, I went ahead and connected some no copyright music. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in my ear now and see how it sounds. Wraps around the neck pretty nice. And let's go ahead and pop it in. Not too bad. Bass is pretty good. A little tempo-y, but uh, pretty good balance. It is not bad at all. I'd say they're about a 8.5 out of 10 on the sound quality scale of my personal preference, but that's just my personal preference. Let's put it next to here and see if you can hear any uh, music coming through. Sounds pretty good, connected pretty easy, and yeah. And don't forget that after you're done with your music, you can just pop off this little slot right here and charge them back up again. But yeah, this has been the Bomb Owl SW219 headset, and uh, I think I'll be using these as well. Maybe not as much as some of the other ones that I reviewed, but they're definitely a good backup pair in case one of the other ones go out, or you could keep them all charged at the same time so that uh, if one dies, you can switch to the other one. But yeah, and today we're looking at this kind of a little bit comical turn me on selfie ring light now i got this from the dollar store for 2.99 funny it's uh the dollar store but uh this is a amazing value apparently so this is a ring light that goes on the front of your cell phone that's supposed to give you that really kind of soft better skin kind of look for your selfies and uh, if we take a closer look we can kind of get a little bit more uh look at what it's supposed to look like on the front of the phone so it has a bunch of little LEDs, and then it's supposed to just slide right on there. I'm not sure if it's going to work great for the size of my phone, but we'll go ahead and see. If we turn it around, it says, take selfies anywhere. It says dark nightclubs, parties, camping, etc. 
It says it has three adjustable, three brightness levels for perfect bright pictures or videos in dark environments. And it also has a rechargeable um, battery inside so you can charge it with USB that is included. That's actually really nice. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of what it's supposed to be looking like. You're supposed to get pictures of that quality, I'm assuming, which I have a little bit of doubt. But uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this and take some selfies with it and see how it looks. So this is what the inside packaging looks like. Go ahead and slide that out. Comes on a little plastic tray right here, so immediately you can see that it comes with a charging USB, which is really handy. And then here is the ring light as well. It's going to be a little bit bright because of my lighting, but if I adjust it downwards you can kind of see the details in it. It has like a uh, white kind of diffuser right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. So it has this white diffuser right here, and then on the top is where the charging port is. So you technically could charge it at the same time as using it if you needed to uh, use it for a longer period of time, or you picked it up when it was dead. Right here it has a little bit of a, you can see that, kind of a gel padding. That way it won't hurt your phone. And then the same gel padding on this side too, so it's just kind of like a clip. And then a hole right here, I believe, for your camera. Hopefully that works for me because my phone's a little bit uh, uh, different, has a little bit of a different spot for the camera. Now let's see if there's any charge in here. So there's already charge in here, and it seems to be uh, pretty bright. It's actually not too bad. So let's go ahead and turn this off, and then I'm going to go ahead and take a selfie for you guys. So a lot of you don't actually know what I look like, so um, I've posted it in uh, my community section before, but uh, let's go ahead and cut to that and see how the selfie turned out. All right, so I went ahead and I took a selfie. So for those of you who don't know what I look like, this is me, Josh. And here's a video of me using it. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. So there's that. And yeah, I think that the ring light works pretty well, um, especially in dark rooms. I tried it a little bit in lighter rooms, but honestly, you'd have to have it on max brightness. And I, I guess it would also depend on your skin tone, too, because I feel like this flares up the reds a little bit more. Um, and maybe it, it, just, it looks better in darker rooms because it focuses on you and the camera kind of blackens out everything behind you. So if you're in more of a darker room, I think that this really emphasizes like the brights of your eyes and like and kind of makes your skin more fair. So I think that that's uh, primarily what this should be used for would be uh, situations like that. But yeah, I think it's pretty nice. And uh, yeah, that was my face. So... <laughs> Now this is a series that I mentioned a while ago and a lot of people wanted me to do. So today we're going to be looking at a ruler and these are pretty much used very widely in schools, at the house and everything, but they're always used to measure things that are small to big. So let's take a really close look at this really close up and see the details in the lettering. So if we pinch and zoom real quick, we can start to focus down on these letters right here. If you notice, you can actually see the pitting in the lettering right there on the C. There's like a little tiny thing right there. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see my finger moving there. Oh no, I can't even point to it. So it's that small. So you can see that right there. If we drag this up, this is actually the edge of the ruler kind of can see that. See how far we can go in. Now it might not be the clearest in the world, but you can also see the edge of that. Oh man, you can see there's like a hair right there. That's crazy. I can't even see that like with my eyes. I can't even notice it there. If we move down a little bit, look, there's a little cut in that probably from the grain. Looks like right here this is a number one. 
Everything looks so shiny close up. It does not look like that at all when it's uh, farther away, but you can see the reflectivity in everything. And you can really see, let's try to focus in. And look at that. That's so cool. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. There we go. So we saw the number two really up close. I know that looks scary. If we had to zoom in on that. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. Yeah, there we go. Cool. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of like an ocean drop off. Like you're focused in on this, but like underneath is like just an abyss. Let's see if we can go down to the inches. I really like the edge of this. That's so cool. Oh, you know what? If we zoom down a little bit, push that forward. Look at that. That is the middle piece that's inserted into the wood that makes it to where when you move your pencil along or your pen it stays steady. Look at that. The reflection of the light against my fingertip is enough to highlight it. That is so cool. Look at that. Oh, look, there's like a tiny little piece right there. Moving that with my, my skin. I can't feel that at all. There is no feeling of me moving this because it's so small. For an idea of how small this is, let's go ahead and zoom out. Look at that. That is insane. Let's go ahead and focus back in here. So here's an inch, I believe, and then there's a centimeter over here. Or almost to the end of it, I think. Actually, it goes up to 28. I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. Oh, we're almost there. I oh, know it goes up to 30. There we are at the very end. see all of the uh, flakiness of the wood on the edges. It's kind of rounded off right there like it bumped into something. There it says inch. Oh, what's that? Looks like something sticky got on here like food. Who knows how long that's been on there. Which is strange because I didn't even see that at all. Like, let's zoom out. I didn't even notice that. Like, what kind of? It looks like gross, like sticky candy or something. I'll zoom in on it. Look at that. What kind of weird stuff is that? That's pretty gross. And then we also have the groove that's in the center that moves along the, the entirety. But let's go ahead and flip it over. So this is the more cleaner portion of the ruler. It's flat. There's nothing on this side. Except the little tiny holes. You get a really good view of that middle piece though on this side. Look at that. There's quite a bit of imperfections on this. I think there's even a little pit right there if we zoom in. Yeah, look at that. And it like goes downward. And then up. I wonder if this got damaged or that's just how it is and I never noticed. Because it goes down. And then it goes back up into another thing as well. That's so weird. 
Huh. It's crazy, like, even with how small this is, you can still see the reflection in it. When I think of mirrors, I usually think of them being big enough to capture, like, the human kind of, uh, you know, face or reflection, but when it's something this small, I don't usually think, oh, there's still a reflection there, but it still is reflecting the uh, other side, or the same side of the wood of the ruler. That's crazy. If we look right here, we can see that there is still some flaking from when this was drilled out or pushed out to make the little hole right here. I'm not sure what these holes are used for. What do you guys think they're used for? I think maybe they're used to hold this maybe in a binder or something. But yeah, very interesting product and uh, usually not when you're just looking at it from, you know, a normal perspective. But when you can zoom in on it and see all these little intricacies, it makes it a lot more interesting. Let me know what you guys think about this video. I want to do a lot more in the future. And, uh, yeah, a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.